the shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. of Shepherd's Hotel in Cairo, Shan Greville recognizes Farlow Swede, daughter of Dr. Fu Manchu. He follows her into the native city where he is trapped by agents of Dr. Fu and taken to the Manchu's house. Under the influence of a mysterious drug prepared by the doctor, Greville sees in Fu Manchu a beneficent, all-powerful superman to be respected and obeyed. Through a note written by himself while under the hypnotic influence of the Manchu, he lures Rima Barton into his car and drives off with her toward the headquarters of Dr. Dr. Fu Manchu. Shen, Shen, please stop the car. You don't know what you're doing. Be quiet, Rima. We're going to Dr. Fu Manchu's house. What's come over you, Shen? You can't be in your right mind. We've all been terribly wrong, Rima. Dr. Fu Manchu is the greatest man the world has ever known. I can't understand why we've all been so set against him. Why we've been afraid of him. Good heavens, Shen, he's a murderer, a fiend. You're wrong, Rima. When you know the doctors I've come to know him, you'll see him in an altogether different light. Dr. Fu Manchu was a great man. What have you done to Mr. Greville, Fu Manchu? You understand, of course, why you are here, Miss Barton. It isn't hard to guess. Mr. Greville is no longer my guest, Miss Barton. My daughter will by this time have taken him back to your hotel. I have no further use for him. But, uh, you... How can I be of use to you? You, Miss Barton, are the medium through which I shall gain possession of the Mokana relics. He shall be crowned in Damascus. He shall be crowned. What the deuce did I hear that? What does it mean? Dreamed it probably, blasted. Why, well, the hotel's dark. It must be... Great Scott, it's three o'clock. Not a soul in the lobby. Oh, oh, good heavens, Mr. Greville. Where have you been? They've been looking for you. The police here. Greville, where the deuce have you been? Uh, I don't know, Weymouth. Uh, where's Sir Lionel? Where's Smith and Rima? Out with the search party. It's a good job I came back a few minutes ago for news. Search party? Where are they searching? All through the Babel Zuela section. Acting on information given by the taxi man who drove you there. I suppose he came back. Yes. You look pretty well done in, Greville. But I'm afraid you'll have to come along and join Mr. Smith. My car's just around the corner. Of course. But first, Greville, so we waste no time, suppose you tell me what happened tonight. What happened? <laughs> Why, yes, if I can. What do you mean? I mean the most important period seems to be a complete blank. Ah, 
Suppose then I ask you a few questions. Uh, go ahead. I'll do the best I can to answer. You left Dr. Petrie here in the lobby between uh, half past seven and eight. Uh, you stopped at the tobacco counter, and where did you go after that? I saw Dr. Fu Manchu's daughter. She was leaving by the main entrance there. I followed her, hoping to trail her to her father's headquarters. She got into a car uh, and... Your driver told us you ran into that lane as the yellow car drew up and immediately drove off. He followed you a moment later, but you were gone without a trace. What happened in that lane? Well, I walked into a trap. They use some sort of anesthetic. Uh -huh. How, I don't know. I must have gone under almost instantly. What sort of anesthetic? Beyond saying it smelled like the drug used in the murder of Dr. Van Berg in Ispahan, I... Uh, I don't know a thing. I can tell you absolutely nothing. By gad, our last hope gone. Oh, wait. There is one other thing. At some time during the night, I don't know when or where, I heard the words, he will be crowned in Damascus. Who spoke those words? Remember? I don't know they were spoken. I remembered them as I came up the terrace steps a moment ago. They just flashed through my mind. Well, I'm ready to go. I suppose Rima's in her room. It's for Miss Rima that we're searching, Greville. What? Rima? Why, she was with Winslow, the airways pilot, and Dr. Petrie. I left her with them. That was a long time ago, Greville. A bit later, there was a hue and cry because you had disappeared. Smith called me, then the taxi man turned but, uh, up. But and... when did Rima disappear? No one knows exactly. The place was in an uproar over your disappearance. Oh, great Scott. And all on account of those confounded relics. There was no clue. One of the terrace waiters is certain he saw it come out and go down the steps to the street, followed by an Arab. Is that all? Nothing else? From that moment, Greville, nothing has been heard or seen of Miss Barton. Look at me, Greville. Now listen. He will be crowned in Damascus. Oh, I see you've got it. What are you thinking about? Quickly. I'm thinking those words were spoken by a, a filthy old beggar. With one leg and a crutch. Well, keep your mind on that beggar. Don't lose him. You are sure it was a crutch, not a stick? Yes, a crutch. I'm positive. Well, did it uh, crunch? Was the man walking on gravel or sand? On stone, I'd say. It was a clear tap. Did he speak English? Yes. Did he say Damas or Damascus? Uh, Damascus. Well, go on. It's, it's gone, Smith. I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, well, recalling those words certainly relieves my mind of an anxiety regarding Rima. How so? It confirms my first opinion that her disappearance was cleverly arranged by the Fu Manchu group. Good heavens! If she's in his hands... Oh, she won't be harmed, I'm certain of that. She's been taken for a very definite purpose. There was a moment when I thought she'd vanished for, well, personal reasons. You understand? You mean, follow Sui? Yes. A jealous woman will hesitate at nothing... Well, buck up, old man. Take my word for it, we'll have news of her before noon. But why the deuce did they take Rima? To bring Sir Lionel to time. Oh, yes, of course. It'll be a case of ransom. Naturally. Rima's life or the Makana relics. And this time, the enemy will score. Not even Sir Lionel would hesitate. Hesitate? Yet I have to force him at the point of a gun, he'll give them up. It won't come to that. Barton is selfishness personified when it comes to his professional enthusiasm. But he has a big heart and he does love Rima. I say, what's the matter? I don't know. My ankles feel as though... Let's see. Put your feet on this chair. Oh, you've been tied with a thin, strong line. The same material, I'd say, that we found on the minaret of the Ispahan Ghost Mosque. I don't recall my ankles being bound. Well, I can't help you there. There's no cue word to arouse your memory. Oh, blast it. If I can ever defeat the genius of this one old man, he's stupendous. He certainly is. Have you examined your pockets since you returned? I never thought of it. Uh, turn them out, everything. All right. My wallet, pipe, pouch, cigarette case, keys, loose money. I guess that's a lot. Anything missing? No, nothing. It's all there. How many cigarettes were in this case when you left? Why, None. I remember dropping the last on the uh, terrace just as I saw Follow Sui getting into her car. Mm -hmm. Your pipe filled but hasn't been lighted. No, that I... mean anything? I, I guess I just didn't light it. Examine your wallet. You know what was in it? Oh, yes. By Jove, look here. This envelope. It wasn't there. That's not mine. Hmm. Shan Greville, personal. You know the handwriting? Seems to me I should. 
Looks familiar. Oh, you, you've seen it before? Yes, I've seen it somewhere. Horizontal green ink. It's addressed to you, marked personal. Why not open it? Oh, yes. Uh, thick green notepaper. Oh, a green silk bag with a small capsule. Well, read it, read it. I don't want you to suffer for what I've been compelled to do. You love Rima. If she does not come back, trust me. I'm not jealous. I send you a tablet which must be dissolved in a glass of white wine and which you must drink at once. I trust you also to burn this letter. To help you, I say, you will be crowned in Damascus. Hmm. Do those words now take you back any further? No, it doesn't mean a thing to me. But the writing, whose is it? I've only seen it once, but it's the writing of Follow Sweet. Sure of that? Positive. Oh, Lord, it's the old story over again. But this time we're dealing with a different type of woman. Dare we trust her? I'd just as soon think of following her instructions as of jumping out of that window. This capsule... Oh, wait, don't throw it out. You jump to conclusions too quickly. Old boy, can you think of any reason why they'd want you out of the way? No. But we've had experience in the past of the dangerous actions of persons under the influence of Fu Manchu's drugs. Nevertheless, we'll keep this little capsule. It may come in handy later. Now, look here. You are fagged out. Petrie is due back shortly. I'm going to have him put you to sleep. Right. But not for more than an hour. I can't think of sleeping while I might be of help to Rima. Meantime, I want to photograph this letter. Then you'll want to destroy it, of course. Anything you say, Smith. I... Oh, excuse me. Hello. Oh, yes, Weymouth. What is it? Oh, good. I'll be there in ten minutes. News? Rima? Weymouth's men have picked up one of those slave coast wharfs Fu Manchu uses. They want me to question him. I'll go along. You'll stay here and wait for Petrie. If I learn anything, I'll get in touch with you. Well, Weymouth, were you able to get anything out of him? Nothing. We have him in the next room. Burns, the police surgeon's with him. Oh, the fellow's hurt? Well, you can see for yourself. There he is. Mm -hmm. Hypnosis, Dr. Burns? Well, uh, I'm blessed if I know Smith. He's rigid as a post. I wouldn't want to go on record as definitely diagnosing it as hypnosis, however. You found him this way, Weymouth? No, we had him up here for questioning. Without warning, he stiffened out in his chair like that. Catalepsy, Doctor? Uh, uh, frankly, uh, I don't know. It's beyond me. The fellow's in a complete state of suspended animation. <laughs> Shadow of Fu Manchu.